So yesterday we talked about photosynthesis. We went over what we call the equation for photosynthesis. And again, this is a chemical reaction that takes place in the chloroplast of plant cells when they have light available and the other raw materials. And so, as we just went over, light is used to rearrange the atoms of carbon dioxide and water to form new products, which are glucose and oxygen. And the glucose is the important thing. And that's the purpose of this, is to make glucose, which is when we say plants make their own food, that's what we're talking about. They make glucose for, for them to use um, as their source of energy. So next we need to talk about respiration, which is related to photosynthesis. Um, and we've actually already met, mentioned a little bit. Back when we talked about living things, and we talked about um, the characteristics of living things, we talked about metabolism and ingestion, digestion, and one of the things we mentioned in there was respiration. So you remember what we said it was from, from that, that unit? Matt? Um, releasing energy. Yeah. Is releasing energy from food. That's sort of a simple way to say it. Today we're going to get into the details of how that actually happens. Your question, Tom? No, it's just a simplified way of saying So respiration. Now, I will also tell you that um, respiration means something else as well in biology. Where might you have heard respiration before in another sort of context? The respiratory system. Yeah, the respiratory system. Respiration also means breathing in and out of your lungs. Um, so it's sometimes a little bit confusing. The respiration we're going to talk about is usually called cellular respiration or aerobic respiration. Um, it's a chemical reaction that takes place. So just keep that in mind. Now the good news is, though, if you know the, the equation for photosynthesis, uh, the formula, the equation for respiration is pretty simple because it's almost the exact opposite, but not quite. There's one small difference. So based on me telling you that, you could probably fill in the left side, the reactants for respiration. What are the two things that it requires to um, work? What's one, Sophie? Oxygen and the other, Caitlin? Glucose. glucose. It needs glucose and oxygen. You can think of glucose as sort of like the fuel to this process. So, in respiration, cells use glucose and oxygen to produce three things. No, it's not. If it were, it'd be pretty interesting because all of us would be what? Glowing. Glowing constantly. You'd be like a light bulb walking around. All of your cells are constantly going through respiration. So if the type of energy produced was light, we would be like light bulbs. But we're not. So the energy is the difference. So when I said they're almost exactly the same, this is the difference because respiration doesn't produce light as a form of energy, but something else. And you probably don't know what this is. Do you think you know what it is, Brandon? Uh, yeah, it's ATP. Yeah. It's it stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is an actual molecule, okay? But it's a molecule that stores energy and it's what all of the cells in our body run on. Okay? Cells in our body run on this, this molecule called ATP. You could think of it as energy. All of these things basically use ATP as their source of energy. So, you know, for your muscles to move as you're writing your notes, the cells, muscle cells in your muscle tissue, the mitochondria are using glucose and they're releasing ATP, which actually allows the muscles to move. So, ATP is energy. And then it produces two waste products, which you could probably name. Brian, what's one? CO2. CO2. And then the other, CC? Yes. Water and carbon dioxide. So, 
No. So this is the um, equation for respiration. Glucose plus oxygen produce ATP, which is the energy, and water and carbon dioxide. So let's, for a minute, these reactants, where does the glucose come from that all of your cells need? Tom? Yeah, the food's you eat. Okay? So, you know that um, bowl of cookie crisp you ate this morning, right now it's being digested and it's being broken down. Our body can really convert just about any nutrient into glucose, whether it's fat, protein, or carbohydrates. It can convert them into glucose to send to ourselves. And so the foods we eat are where we get our glucose. Where do we get the oxygen? What's up? From what? From the air we breathe in. When we breathe in and our blood absorbs oxygen, that oxygen eventually makes its way to our cells, to the mitochondria, so that respiration can take place. Right? How come if we use energy in glucose water, how can we get dehydrated? Yeah, somebody last class asked the same question. It doesn't produce enough water to sustain. Um, we need more water than is produced in respiration. But some of it is used. It's the same thing in plants. So, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, so the goal of respiration, the ultimate goal is to, what's the point of it? To produce ATP, okay, which is a form of energy. Now, a common mistake that sometimes people make is if I ask two questions and I say, all right, photosynthesis happens in what type of organisms? What would people say? Plants. So respiration happens in what? That's the mistake. Yes. Respiration happens in all living things. Because if you think about it, so plants need ATP just like animals do and other species. So in photosynthesis, plants are making what? Glucose. Glucose. But actually to get that into a usable form of energy, they have to then send that glucose to the mitochondria so it can be transformed into ATP. So plants do both processes. In fact, and the other thing is true is that, so plants do produce oxygen, and some of that oxygen they can use in respiration. Um, other times they need to take in oxygen from the air. Yeah, you could think of it, they take in gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and expel gases as well. So that's what respiration is. It's taking glucose, combining with oxygen, and changing it into ATP, a form of energy that cells can actually use. It happens in all of our cells constantly. It's right? why our cells, if they're ever cut off from oxygen, then they eventually die. Okay? That's why you need to breathe constantly, because your cells need this constant uh, source of oxygen. Any questions about respiration? So you will need to memorize the formula, the equation for both photosynthesis and respiration, and have to write them both out. That's going to be on Tuesday's quiz. Is he going to ask if respiration, respiration is in both cells? It certainly will. All right. So uh, I have one summary of photosynthesis.